nicely for them when they play the Pittsburgh Pirates. Going in, the Mets were 8-8 eight and eight against the very sorry Bucks, but New York won it today, 3-1, to one, picking up, as it ends up, a half game in the standings. And uh, another big crowd turned out at Three River Stadium. Going to change it to Three People's Stadium as they play uh, the Mets. And Bob Kipper delivers, no, George Foster delivers a uh, uh, whole solo home run, his 20th of the year, gives the Mets the early 1-0 lead. In the bottom of the fourth, the Mets have a 2-0 lead. Big play here, the throw to Larry Boa seems to have one fourth play and Boa over to first for a DP, but Dave Johnson says, wait a minute, you mean Boa missed second base? I don't believe you. Well, you can look at it in the clubhouse, Dave, because you're Gan. Top of the six, Mookie Wilson at third. Johnson listening on the radio as Keith Hernandez hits a double down the left field line. Mookie scores from third, it's 3-0 Mets. But the Pirates have the bases loaded, down 3-1. And the ninth is one out. Orozco comes in, gets one. Then, yes, R.J. Reynolds' wrap did go around. Orozco with the heart-stopping 17th save to save the day. And maybe the pennant race, the way things turned out up in Montreal for the Mets. As the Mets beat Pittsburgh 3-1, Rick Aguilera got the win his 10th of the year. Hey, the Mets only had four hits, but they were very economical today. So, the way it stacks up, St. Louis a four-game lead over the Mets, and that's the same number. The Cardinals' magic number is also four. A lot of people like the number four over in the National League West. The first place Dodgers reduced their magic number to four as they beat the San Francisco Giants. The final was three to one at Dodger Stadium. Pedro Guerrero getting homer number 33 for Los Angeles. Jerry Royce getting the win. He is 14 and 10. He left after six innings with tightness in his calf muscles. Tom Niedenpure came on to get save number 18. So the Dodgers stay five and a half up on the Reds as the Reds beat the Astros. The final in Cincinnati was five to two. Tom Browning becomes the first rookie. 20-game winner in 31 years. We have some highlights of that game for you. As the Reds go out on top in this game in the second inning, Dave Van Gorder's single brings in Dave Concepcion, who had tripled before him. 1-0 Reds out on top. Reds add to their lead in the third. Dave Parker slashes one to left field. This one bounces, goes over the wall. Ground will double. Max Venable comes in to score. It's 2-0 Cincinnati. The next batter is Buddy Bell. This is the big blow of the game. A three-run homer to left center field off starter and loser Mike Scott and the Reds take the lead five to nothing more than enough for starter tom browning he went seven in the third inning struck out six and uh, afterwards the rookie talked about today's win and his 20th victory the first again in 31 years having that cushion you can just go out there and pretty much pitch your game and try to you know stay ahead of the hitters and uh that's basically what happened for me today is it sunk in yet what you've accomplished no not really i came off the field today i had you know a few tears in my eyes because i didn't realize you know it really hadn't sunk in yet, but, you know, it's nice being able to win, and, you know, I think the big thing is that uh, we put a little bit of pressure on the Dodgers again. They're going to have to win today to keep us five and a half back or six back, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, we'll just go out there and tomorrow and try to do the job again, and, you know, 20 is over with now, and I'm going to go out there and look for number 21. Reds win 5-2, to two. Tom Browning 20-9, and nine, the first 20-game winner as a rookie since Bob Grimm did it for the Yankees back in 1954. Mike Scott, the loser, he is 18-8 and eight on the season, and Ted Power takes the save. A quick check of the National League West standings. The Reds remain five and a half games back of the Dodgers. The Dodgers' magic number is four. Chris? A couple of all-by-the-way games in the National League. Another whole homer at Wrigley, right? Between the Phils and Cubs, rarely the case. Final, the Cubs 11, the Phils 10. Cubs get two homers from Keith Moreland, who is riding a 17-game winning streak, and they get two more homers from Ron Bourne in the U.S. Stay. Mike Schmidt had two homers for Philadelphia. I mean, he makes a career hitting homers in Wrigley. He has 32 now on the season. Darren Dalton also hit one out for the Phils. Seven homers, 21 runs. Cubs had a new all-time attendance record, 2,119,000 plus, and they even won. San Diego at Atlanta. Uh, the Padres took a lead finally in the 13th inning of this ball game. As up to that point, nine pitchers were used. The Pods looking to close it out in 13, led 6-5 at that point. And when Chris and I return, we will check out the American League as things uh, stay as tight as ever in the West, and the uh, Jays get a little closer to clinching mm -hmm. over in the East. We'll be back in a minute. Angels and the Royals have hit the road, Jack, and so have their winning ways. For the second straight game, Kansas City watched in horror in the Minneapolis Homer Dome as the Twins came away with a win. Minnesota winning today by a score of 5-3. to three. Rookie Dennis Burt, a winner for the second time. He went the first six and the third, gave up only three hits. 
Uh, Dave Wright Angle hit a home run for Minnesota as Kansas City got a homer from George Orta, but it was not enough as they lost to Minnesota 5-3. to three. But... Talk about some missing opportunities. The Angels certainly missed a great one to move into sole possession of uh, first place in the AL West. Don Sutton missed a chance to get career win number 296. Sutton left after seven innings, leading five to nothing in Cleveland, but the Indians got five in the eighth and a two-run homer by Jerry Willard in the ninth to win this game seven to five. Those five runs in the eighth coming off of reliever Donnie Moore. Rukovic Thornton also homering in that game. But Jerry Reed getting the win. Stu Clyburn taking the loss. So a check of the American League West standings. I uh, one other game to tell you about Chicago and Oakland. And uh, look at that game with the Oakland A's defeating the Chicago White Sox by the score of 7-4. Uh, Rio getting the victory in that game. Now a quick look at the AL West standings. Uh, California, Kansas City, this is 6 and 68 on the season. They both have eight games left to play. Four of them against each other. And what happens if nobody wins those games <laughs> against each other? The way they're going, it could happen. Knock the Toronto Blue Jays' magic number down to four as well. That's the magical number this evening. The AL East pace setters again got strong pitching in Milwaukee. This time by Jim Clancy and Gary Lavelle, and they bopped the Brewers by a score of 6-1. to one. In the second inning with no score, the Blue Jays get going as Ernie Wood is at the plate. He singles off Tim Leary, scoring George Taco Bell from second base. The Blue Jays lead at one nothing. Same score in the fourth inning with Al Oliver on third. Witt will fly it to Randy Reddy in left. Now, he makes a very strong throw to the plate, but Charlie Moore does everything for one minor detail. Hold on to the ball. He drops it, safe at the plate, 2-0 Jays. In the fifth, with a couple of men aboard, Lloyd Mosby is safe on the air by Paul Molitor, scoring Garth Clockwork Orge on the play. That makes it 4-0, and Toronto goes on to win it 6-1. Jim Clancy goes the first six. I'm telling you, this guy is going to play a big role if they go places in the playoffs and the World Series. He's been hurt, hasn't done much. All of a sudden, he's pitched well. He's 9-5. Lavelle, three innings of Hitless relief. So Toronto's pitching in order outside of speed. Now they're getting the rest there as they beat Milwaukee 6-1. For all those Yankee fans who still have their hopes, they at least kept the Jays' magic number to four today as they rallied for two runs in the bottom of the ninth. Dave Winfield knocking in the game winner as the Yanks defeated the Orioles by the score of 6-5. to five. We'll pick this game up in the seventh inning, tied up at four apiece. Alan Wiggins singles through the middle. Nice try by Meacham. That'll score Rick Dempsey, and the Orioles take the lead by 1-5 to 4. Still 5-4, ninth inning, second and third for the Yanks. One out, Ken Griffey at the plate, and the Griffey bounces one to Alan Wiggins at second base, so gives the plate a look, but uh, no way they're going to get him. Dan Pasqua ties the game up, we're at 5 apiece. Then after an intentional walk to Don Mattingly, Dave Winfield with the base hit to left off of Sammy Stewart. Ricky Henderson comes in to score the winning run, and the Yanks rally to beat the Orioles by the score of 6-5. to five. Ron Guidry, by the way, the starter, and the winner goes the distance, uh, getting his 21st win this season. He is 21 and Bust loose on. So he is now 5-6. and six. A quick check of the standings in the American League East. The Yanks still six games back of the Toronto. Four is four. A couple of other American League tilts to talk about. Uh, scoreless through nine, but in the 10th in Detroit, the Red Sox get homers from Glenn Hoffman, and Dwight Evans back-to-back, -back, and they make Bobby Ojeda a winner as they beat Detroit 2-0. Uh, Dan Petrie real pleased after going nine innings, giving up two hits, and watching Willie Hernandez give up the two home runs. Texas and Seattle, that was the late start in the Kingdome, and the Mariners led the Rangers 3-1 in the fourth inning. Coming up next on the Sports Center, the number one team in the country in college football. That's why it's dangerous to rank them, see, at this stage.